I may have to uh, fail the Power Queen on its cold circuit protection. Before we get into this video, I want to talk about one of the results that I got while testing this Power Queen 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. I put the battery in the freezer for several hours, dropping its temperature to minus five degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 40 degrees less than its low temperature cutoff. After messing around with the battery for a little bit, it ended up charging correctly. But I want you to check out the results that I got and let me know what your opinion is on the way that I achieved that final 100% state of charge on this battery. Now let's get to work on these tests so we can find out whether or not that battery is one of the best standalone lithium iron phosphate batteries of 2024. On this channel, Off Grid Adventure, the most common products that I test are portable power stations that are consumer ready off the shelf that someone can purchase, take camping, plug it in, charge it, and they're good to go. And one type of battery I frequently leave off of my testing list is pure lithium iron phosphate deep cycle style batteries. And I have avoided testing these batteries in general because typically the cost of one of these batteries is in many cases the same price, if not more than what you would pay for one of those pre-packaged power station deals. So when Power Queen reached out to me to see if I was interested in testing and reviewing this 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate deep cycle style group 24 battery, I was not hesitant at all. In fact, this battery has two features that really piqued my curiosity. Number one, and far more common nowadays, is this Bluetooth connectivity, which allows me to see exactly what's going on inside of the battery with their app. And the second feature, which is absolutely vital to a true off-grid setup, is this low temperature protection. You see, one of the main issues with lithium iron phosphate batteries is if you attempt to charge them beyond zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit, it will cause permanent irreversible damage inside of the cells. And so by buying LFP batteries that have a low temperature cutoff, it's an insurance policy that prevents you from causing permanent damage especially if your batteries are in a location where they're not gonna have ready access to heat. And so to answer one of the most important questions about this kind of battery, I'm gonna do a battery capacity rundown test. Preparing for this test, I topped off the Power Queen battery using this 14.4 volt 20 amp charger. Putting some alligator clips on the charger would make it much easier for me to top off the batteries after these tests. So that's probably an upgrade that I will make in the future. This system is now fully ready to do a battery capacity rundown test. I have my heat dissipator attached. In the second here, I'm gonna turn all the dials, get this machine moving. That way I can measure all the power that I pull out of this battery. Before testing, I wanna show you the Power Queen's initial state of charge, which can be loosely monitored or measured by the amount of voltage coming out of the battery. In this case, if you look between my arms, you can see that it shows about 13.33 volts. At the end of this test, right before it shuts down, we'll see how many volts it's putting out to determine whether or not it has a regulated output. So just so you guys are aware, my testing device will only pull a maximum of 185 watts. I've currently got it set to 182 watts. So it's pulling 12.6 volts at 14.4 amps. So at this rate, my battery should give us about seven hours of runtime. So we will be back in about seven hours and see if we got that 100 amp hours from the 100 amp hour battery. One thing to keep in mind with these deep cycle style batteries is that I truly expect to get close to 100% of its rated capability. However, when testing those consumer ready power stations, I only expect to get anywhere between 70 and 90% of the rated capacity return. The main reason for this is that this battery has nothing attached to it, such as an inverter, a regulator, any of those things that have parasitic loads that will draw down the battery as you're running these tests. In this case, the only thing attached to this battery is my heat sink, which will essentially pull all of its rated capacity. So for the purposes of this video, I expect to see 100 amp hours. And for me, that will be a successful result. Well, folks, the results are in, and this 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery returned 102.12 amp hours, which is about 2% higher than its rated value. One thing to keep in mind about pulling from this battery with a load of 185 watts is that it's only about 0.15C or 15% of the battery's capacity. 
Typically for tests like this, we would wanna pull a 0.2C, or in this case, about 260 watts from this device. Unfortunately, my little heatsink here has a maximum value of 185 watts, so I'm stuck with what I have and it is what it is. Something to keep in mind with a battery system like this is that it's only rated to put out a maximum of 100 amps. So that will limit any AC inverter loads to about 1,280 watts. So if you are planning to use this for a higher load, you may wanna get more than one of these so that their combined power can support whatever your load is. This Power Queen Smart Edition battery is about 10.25 inches wide, almost nine inches tall at the terminals, and a little more than six and a half inches deep. This Power Queen battery has low temperature protection, high temperature protection, undercurrent protection and overcurrent protection. So it basically has all the protections that you would need for an off-grid setup. Now, before I deep freeze this battery, I'm gonna go ahead and charge it a little bit. That way, later when I pull it out of the freezer and attempt to charge it again, I'll know whether or not that cold weather protection is actually working. So to get this thing started with charging, I went ahead and hooked up my 20 amp charger I've also got the screen with the Bluetooth features connected right now. And one thing I wanted to point out is there's really not a whole lot that you can do with this Bluetooth app. It's perfect for observing what's going on inside of the battery. However, it doesn't really allow me to do anything. I can't turn on the BMS or mess with the BMS. Uh, I could try to balance the cells if that was an option, but none of those appear to be an option. It shows me that the internal temperature of the battery is about 77 degrees Fahrenheit. So I am curious later to see when I put this in the freezer, if it will show me when it is below freezing. In addition to that, you can see I'm putting in about 200 watts. So at this rate, it would take me at least five, if not six hours to recharge this battery. So this battery spent more than a few hours in my secret freezer device, don't let my wife know. And it is now currently at negative 0.4 degrees Fahrenheit. I pulled it out of the freezer maybe about 10 minutes ago. So I've got everything hooked up. I'm now at 1.4 degrees Fahrenheit and all I've got to do is plug in my charger. And what I want to see is will the the under temperature protection prevent the device from charging, which let's see. Now the, the screen here is a little odd. It's, it's awkward how it's coming out 100%, 3.2 degrees Fahrenheit. I believe that the BMS inside of this device testing to say, hey, are we there yet? Are we there yet? As the temperature goes up, I'm curious if this will just keep doing that. It's not a huge problem. It's just putting little micro bursts of power into the battery, but this is what I would expect from a device like that. I'm just gonna go ahead and let this thing sit and I feel like eventually it will start charging on its own once it hits that 32 or above degree Fahrenheit state. The temperature on the lithium battery is now 21.2 degrees Fahrenheit. I still have the charger plugged in and the BMS is essentially preventing the, the charger from putting any power into the device. It did cycle on and off a few times just to make sure it didn't want to do it, and it has not cycled on in a while. Something interesting about this app is it does show me that I am at about 100% state of charge and I am under temperature, and I believe that's the way that the BMS is telling the charger not to give it any power. And so I am curious to see at what point when I get close to that 30 or 32 degrees Fahrenheit, will this thing start cycling power back into it to recharge it? The internal temperature of the battery just hit 32 degrees Fahrenheit. It's still not charging. We've reached 33.8 degrees Fahrenheit. The battery is actually not feeling cold to the touch anymore. It feels okay. I don't think it is going to unless maybe I trigger it with a load, it's not gonna automatically turn on. Well guys, I think we have possibly a failure here or the sensor is a little bit more sensitive than it should be. The thing that surprised me the most right now is that the shunt is still showing a 94% uh, availability of power. This is where I'm getting a little kind of concerned about this thing, is it's showing that it is at 94%, and it's showing me that it will be fully charged in about 16 minutes, which is just simply not true. So I'm gonna let this keep going and I may have to uh, possibly fail the Power Queen on its cold 
circuit protection. I'm at negative one uh, hours here for charging, which that NAN means not a number. And what's going on here is the the shunt re-zeroed itself to about 100% state of charge when I first tried to charge it while it was still frozen. And so what's going on now is possibly the battery itself will continue to charge um, until, for example, this NAN becomes like minus five hours, uh, which is a full state of charge. And so the issue that we have right now with this system is that we're showing 99% state of charge. The device doesn't really know what's going on inside. So I'm gonna call this a fail on the system to recover from a frozen state. So I'm gonna let it continue to charge. The only concern I have with allowing this to continue to charge is if I hit that five, six hour time limit and this thing does not stop charging and the over temperature protection does not shut off charging, then this thing could overcharge and essentially become a ticking time bomb. And so for the purposes of this video, I do have fire extinguishers close by, which if these things do catch on fire, they, they're essentially a runaway fire. But for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna go ahead and let this thing recharge until it stops on its own, see what happens, and then I'll just report back to you. So the good news is the battery did stop charging in about the right amount of time. And I started to notice what I think is possibly going on here. This percentage gauge is not accurate to the voltage inside of the device. So I did watch the voltage kind of go up as the battery was charging. And once it got to around what I thought should be about a 100% state of charge, it did stop charging. So the cold weather protection does work as designed. There's no problem there. It's just if you're using this app, it might give you a little bit of a loss of confidence in the device because the app is not giving you the right information. However, this battery did perform as designed. So the question that leaves me with is whether or not this battery is worth the very low price that it comes in at. And for me, the answer is yes, absolutely. If I am gonna make an off-grid setup, I would love to have maybe four or five of these batteries with a large enough inverter and a large enough solar panel array that I could keep this thing going indefinitely. And in fact, the cost of all of those items put together will be far less than if you bought the equivalent size pre-packaged portable power station. If you found my video useful, please give it a thumbs up. And now watch this video because the algorithm thinks that you'll enjoy it.